the March 11th disaster and nuclear crisis caused a sharp drop in the number of foreign visitors to Japan. But now they're starting to come back. Authorities say last month saw the first year-on-year -year increase since the catastrophe. It was also a record for visitors from China. The National Tourism Organization says about 679,000 foreigners visited Japan for sightseeing or business in March. The figure was up 92.4 percent from March 2011, the first annual increase since the disaster. But it remains 4.4 percent below the level recorded two years ago. Travelers from China rose to more than 130,000, a record for the month of March. Visitors from Taiwan and Britain are also on the rise. Emergency officials in Japan are showing for the first time how they can prepare for chemical terrorist attacks. Ground Self-Defense Forces personnel granted NHK access to their annual training program for police, firefighters, and Coast Guard officers. The GFD, GSDF Chemical School is in Saitama, north of Tork Tokyo. Some 40 police officers, firefighters, and Coast Guard members from across the nation took part in the training session. They put on protective gear and masks, detected chemicals using special equipment, and cleaned contaminated vehicles. Japanese authorities learned to prepare for the worst in 1995. Members of the Omishindikyo religious cult released deadly sarin gas in Tokyo's subway system during the morning rush hour. Thirteen people died. 6,300 others became sick. At the time, I watched news coverage of the sarin gas attack on television. If another incident happens, I will use the knowledge and techniques I have acquired during this training session. Trainers at the GSDF Chemical School say their program can help strengthen cooperation between defense forces, police, firefighters and the Coast Guard. The hunt for a group of bears that mauled two women to death at a tourist park in northern Japan is over. Hunters managed to shoot the six bears dead on Friday afternoon after they fled their enclosure into the surrounding forests. The drama at the bear park in Kazuno Akita Prefecture began on Friday morning when park officials made an emergency call to report that one of the workers had been attacked. Rescuers found a female employee lying outside an enclosure, but were unable to reach her for several hours because there were still bears milling about. When they did finally reach her, she was already dead. The body of another female worker was found nearby. The park had 38 bears, including brown bears and Asiatic black bears. It was preparing to open for the spring tourist season. Following reports of the escape, the national road near the park was cordoned off, and outdoor activities at nearby elementary and junior high schools were suspended. The bear enclosure is surrounded by a fence measuring about 10 meters high. A hunter says the gates were locked, but snow had accumulated against parts of the fence. The gates were locked, but the bears could have climbed up the snowbank and over the fence. If one bear climbed over, the others may have followed. Experts say it's unusual for captive bears to attack people. Wild bears are most often scared of humans, but may attack people out of fear. Bears in captivity are used to people and rarely attack. Police are investigating how the bears escaped and the reason for the attack. But there's another animal. We got two, two types, subtypes of what's called a raccoon dog. One is very cute, like a raccoon, but they're actually the most primitive type of dog, you know, wolf, dog, fox type huh. species. Really? Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I live in the mountains in Japan. Uh, you know, you get back from uh, work very late at night, uh, and on the last train, I walk through the mountain in the, in the late night, and I see these creatures sort of scurrying down the road. But these are not the cute ones. They are very long. They're long, much bigger than the fox, more like a wolf. Long, ugly snout, a rat-like face, long, bushy tails. They go through garbage. They eat insects. They're, they're, they're scavengers. They're predators. Uh, they're also vampires. Uh, the lady uh, next door to my house had some chickens. This, this animal is clever enough. It's got these very long claws to unlock, let's say, a chicken coop. You know, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll yeah. uh, un unlatch it. Sure. They'll go in, 
and they don't want to eat the feathers of the chicken, so they latch onto their nest and suck the blood out of them, okay? Now, these are the animals I'm really worried about because I think mutation, these things eat anything, and the mutations of these animals, they're large enough to take down a child or an elderly person or even an adult. I, I, I pick up a, a armload of rocks whenever I go in case they get too close because I don't want to get rabies from a bug. What is it? What are these so, called again? They're called raccoon dogs. Huh. But there's two subspecies. One is cute and pretty. The other is extremely large and potentially dangerous. I think the mutation of these things in the wilds of Fukushima now that they're left, because these are the animals that are killing off, they're eating up the, uh, these cattle. They're just uh, tearing the skin and the flesh off them, leaving nothing, okay? They're, they're quite uh, dangerous animals, and if left alone by humans, you know. And, and you know, they're afraid of humans because, you know, farmers, despite our strict gun control laws, there are farmers with guns, hunting clubs, and they shoot these things down mercilessly, you know. But without the farmers there, uh, these things are going to really flourish. The other problem is that their bodies are mixing bags for all kinds of diseases, you know, uh, salmonella. You talked about rabies, you know, so they're major carriers of these diseases. So if there's going to be mutation of bacteria like avian influenza, uh, 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 e. coli bacteria, it's yeah. going to, or cholera, that sort of thing, it's going to be happening in these creatures, which are very hard to hunt because they're, they're, they go out at night. And, uh, you know, they're rumbling around the bushes. You hear them, but you don't see them often. And uh, so I think there's a real potential danger of uh, major diseases coming out and with attacks, uh, future attacks on humans, you know, that uh, this is I'm really seeing, like yeah, a nightmare yeah. scenario. Yeah. I'm looking at pictures of them now, and I see what you're saying. The larger one is is not a, not a pleasant thing to look at. The smaller ones are kind of cute. I'm, I'm frankly surprised they haven't. Made, been made into pets, exotic pets over here in the U.S. because they're they look like a raccoon, but a, more of a dog yeah. body. Interesting. Well, they got sharp claws and they're yeah. primitive. You know, they're yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, they yeah. They don't have the fine intel intelligence. They have the cunning of a dog, but not its friendliness or well, its finer intelligence. You know, they look not, like they can be pretty not nasty. Animals, raccoons no. can be nasty. Creatures. Yeah, raccoons can be very nasty over here. There's no question about that. They're tough. Yeah, well, these are dogs. So yeah. these are very primitive dogs. So yeah. the, the, the ugly looking ones are really fearsome animals, and they're wow. dangerous. And uh, huh. so I, I think I think there's a future threat. Again, the Pandora's box is open. More threats, biological threats, are going to emerge. Obviously, right. What's and your I think the high radiation. <laughs> inside these uh, <laughs> wild boar are indi in indicative of what... You, what you sound like about. a 1950s science fiction movie, Yochi, describing oh, this stuff. Vampire dogs, yeah, that's pretty yeah. amazing. And, you know, the monkeys are, no, are not so easy either. You know, there are some monkeys in Miyagi Prefecture. My neighbor's uh, grandson threw some firecrackers at them. Two days later, they, they, they a herd of them came to smash her roof in, her metal roof, smash it in, yeah. Really? So, you know, this is... Revenge. Uh, animals Animals aren't always the cute little things that some of the environmentalists like to think they are. You know, they... Well, they and I, I hate to see the mutants because, you know, you know, either the ones who die out will be strangely mutated, but others will become larger and stronger and much more... Ah, uh, you're making a, a, a very clear point predicated on science. Uh, yeah, this is wild. Isn't that what uh, happened to Godzilla, right? Minding his own business? Well, that's basically it. Yeah, I, gosh knows what's going to be happening in these oceans. You, you didn't hear me do this the other night. Y'all, the uh, rest of you might have.
I'm Phil Mickelson, pro golfer. If you have painful, swollen joints, I've been in your shoes. One day I'm on top of the world. The next I'm saying, I have this uh, thing called psoriatic arthritis. I had some uh, intense pain. It progressively got worse. My rheumatologist told me about Embril. I'm surprised how quickly my symptoms have been managed. Because Enbrel suppresses your immune system, it may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, and nervous system and blood disorders have occurred. Before starting Enbrel, your doctor should test you for tuberculosis and discuss whether you've been to a region where certain fungal infections are common. Don't start Enbrel if you have an infection like the flu. Tell your doctor if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if while on Enbrel, you experience persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Get back to the things that matter most. Good job, girls. Ask your rheumatologist if Enbrel is right for you. Give me a hug. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I thought that was the stupidest answer, but obviously you know something. There's got to be two other people in the hundred. I know, I know, but it's up there. And you went, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh God. This is... Andrew, you are not the. You know, some of you years ago remember there, there was this thing called Murphy's Law and everybody was joking about Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law isn't a joke. It's an actual principle of engineering. It states basically if something can go wrong, it will. If there's a flaw or a defect in a product, you, know, you distribute that product among millions of people, it, it's only a matter of time before that flaw is going to manifest itself. You know, in other words, these nuclear power plants, no matter how many fail safe and, and how many, how carefully they build these things and how, how much accident prevention measures they use, sooner or later some unforeseen thing is going to happen and there's going to be a disaster. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows that they're bad. It's depressing. Everybody's out of ideas and scared of losing subscribers. A thousand views will get you but a dollar. Google are going bust. Sock accounts keep on trolling every single one of your channels. Fucktards are running wild on the tweets. And there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do about it. And there's no end in sight. We know that our videos are unfit to be seen and that our words are unfit to be heard. And we sit there watching our computer screens as countless videos come up telling us that today there were 15 DMCA's and 63 false flagging incidents as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad. They're worse than bad. They're crazy. And everybody, everywhere is going crazy. So we don't upload anymore. We just sit there on our channels and as more suspensions go on and on and on and the little world we're in gets smaller and smaller and all we say is please, please, just leave me here in our blog TV chat rooms and leave us here with our Twitter and our Facebook and, and our Ustream and we won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to riot. I don't want you to write to YouTube or Google because I wouldn't know what to tell you to say anyway. I don't know what to do about the DMCAs and the fundies and the fucktiles and the false flagging and the slime that's on this site. All I know is this. You've got to get mad. You've got to get mad. You've got to stand up and say, I'm a human being, damn it. My vlogs have value. So I want you to get up. Go to a website where you can post a comment, go to a blog, go to anywhere you can find, just go somewhere, go and stick your head, stick your hands on your t keyboard and type the words, I'm mad as hell! And I'm not going to take it anymore! I'm mad as hell!